Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. And at this point, we've pretty much got content going out every 48 hours. So make sure you stay up to date with everything that we have. Okay. And if you need any help with your business, reach out to me. Description below, there's a number of ways we can connect and I can help you with any business uh, struggle that you might have at the moment. Now, today I want to talk about 10 ways to improve your indoor sports facility. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking to a lot of coaches who are owners of indoor sports facilities, right? And a lot of them reach out to me because they are struggling to create more revenue uh, and they just want to find different ways to improve their indoor sports facility uh, business. Now, what I want to be very clear here is that when you have an indoor sports facility business, right, this becomes a separate business to your actual coaching business, right? A lot of coaches want to purchase an indoor facility because they feel as though that's going to help their, their coaching program to grow and scale. But what they don't realize is that when you do purchase an indoor facility, okay, this becomes ultimately another business that you then have to manage and grow and, and look to scale, right? So alongside your actual coaching program. So I don't want you to think that just because you've got a coaching program that that's going to help your indoor facility to grow, right? There's a lot more that goes into building a really good and prosperous indoor sports facility. So this, this video is pretty much going to be relevant if you are in basketball, if you're in soccer, right? If you're in any sport that has an indoor sports facility or an indoor training facility that you, you are using to run uh, your sessions out of and that you have clients that you see on a regular basis, this video will help you, right? Our company's got a lot of experience helping coaches to scale to the point where they, they are in a position to make that investment. But again, what you've got to remember is that once you are at that position, okay, that becomes an extra business, right? That becomes a separate business to your coaching business. Not only do you have to grow and scale your coaching program, your training business, but now you've got to look to grow and scale your indoor sports facility, right? So I want to share with you 10 different ways to improve your facility, right? So again, screen in front, the highlighted points are the ones I'm going to go through. These are pretty much the ones that uh, I see on a regular basis. These are the ones that when I speak to, to business owners who have indoor facilities, these are the ones that they, they ask me about and how they can improve. Right, so the first one is quality training surface. So if you are in soccer, if you're in basketball, then you've got to have a good quality training surface so that your, your clients can come and get quality training from you, okay? Now, if you're in soccer, and you've got an indoor turf uh, field, right? And it's got lots, lots of holes in it, or it's, you know, it looks really run down, then you might have the best facility. But if your players don't feel safe training on it, then ultimately they're not going to be with you for very long, right? So when they come to your, your facility, they want to make sure that they have the best surface possible to train. And, and you want the best surface possible, right? Because you want essentially results with the clients you're working with, right? We are in a results uh, industry. So you to get results, you need to have a quality training surface, whether that be an indoor turf field or whether that be a basketball, an indoor, a quality basketball indoor court, right? whatever it is, but you've got to make sure that the surface is really good for your, for your clients to be able to, to use. Now, next one is good lighting and ventilation. Uh, I was speaking with a coach recently and, and we were talking about uh, good ventilation. And a problem that he had is, it, I think it was last year when it got to winter, uh, the heating uh, system within his indoor facility uh, broke. So essentially what, what happened, because he was in a quite 
he was in a cold part of the United States. It was really difficult for any clients and customers that that used it. That you know, because the heating wasn't working, a lot of their clients didn't want to come back to that facility until that got fixed. So making sure that the place has got good lighting, so when you're running sessions. People can actually see where they're going and see if there's any, uh, you know, any objects that they they have to see. Okay, because that's another problem. If there's certain areas of the facility where they can't see, you know, that could cause a health problem because they could trip or they could hit into something, right? And that could be severe. That could cause severe problems for you, right? And then just making sure it's good ventilation. So. In the summer, making sure that there's good uh, air conditioning or that doors can open and let in the fresh air so that it's not damp and that, it, you know, it's 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 a nice fresh area for your customers and clients to come and, and train. And then in the winter, obviously, if you're in, in a very cold part of the United States, making sure that the facility has good um, heating to be able to heat up. Uh, the, the facility now the next one player amenities so this is a uh, changing rooms and yeah so changing rooms bathrooms and making sure that obviously goes without saying that they are clean that they everything works with them and that your players and customers can use and they are happy with it i've been to a lot of indoor facilities in 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 the past and you know, some of them you walk into those facilities and they are just disgusting because they're not cleaned regularly. Uh, some of the the soap machines don't work. Uh, some of them have got broken uh, broken toilets. So just making sure that your players have good changing rooms, good uh, bathrooms to use, and you know, for maybe older older customers or players that want to have a shower making sure that there's there's uh, a place available for them to shower if that is a possibility for your indoor facilities some facilities don't have that because there's not enough room to host that but making sure at least you've got the basics in order which is the bathroom uh, toilets both for men and and so male and female and making sure they change the room so that like your your athletes can go and, and get dressed now next area is parent watch right so if you're going to be running a lot of your training sessions there's going to be parents that are going to want to watch the training sessions so making sure that you have some an area whether it be you know some bleachers on the side so somewhere where parents can sit down and just watch their their children uh, train and play Okay, something really good if you have a coffee machine within the facility, somewhere where parents can get a coffee or something to eat and watch uh, their child uh, train and play is, is really good. And that, that adds a little bit more value because if parents come to your facility and they want to get a drink, they want to sit down to, to watch their child uh, train and, and play, that adds a lot of value because it adds like a community feel and you can have all the parents there just, you know, supporting the coach, supporting their, their play, the players. And it's just, it feels like a great, great atmosphere, right? There's some places I've been to where they don't provide that. So essentially parents have to drop off and then pick up, right? But sometimes it's nice to have parents, a, a little area within the facility where parents can just watch because that, can then generate extra revenue because you can have a bar area or you can as i say you can have a vending machine where people uh, buy uh, snacks and they can watch uh, the training session uh, safety protocol right so that goes without saying so make sure you're insured right so your facility has insurance it has a fire drill in the event of fire so what's the process that we do in the event of fire or any type of um event right so making sure that it's secure it's licensed uh, and that you have a certain protocol for the event of an evacuation 
right? Also making sure that goes without saying that, that you have first aid kits available in the facility in case players uh, fall over or hurt themselves, right? You've got someone that is first aid trained in, in that facility. Okay, and next one is diversifying your customer reach. So what I mean by this is making sure that to get the maximum out of your sports facility that set, that you're maximizing the hours within your day. So during the morning, you could hire it out to local schools. So local schools can come in, use the facility. And um, then during the evening or early evening, you can hire it out to local clubs or run your own training sessions. And then later, later at night or later in the evening, okay, you can hire it out to, to adults where, they, where you could run adult leagues or tournaments, um, or they could play five aside, six aside, seven aside, depending on what your facility is. And this could be for basketball or soccer. Okay. Uh, next one, technology integration. So some facilities have certain if they run leagues, for example, they have a, a certain cameras that take clips of certain highlights of games. And then what they do is they upload it onto the, the sports facilities YouTube channel. And I've seen this happen where some of the some of the games. So, for example, if it's in soccer and you're running a five aside league, you might decide to buy some software that records the matches and then you upload the matches onto a youtube channel where your customers can then go and watch the match in full and watch the highlights right that's quite cool that is integrating technology into your facility also there's other other softwares that you can use to track a uh, player performance if you're running training sessions out of so there's a lot of things uh, that you can integrate a technology base to help your facility and improve your your service. And next one, marketing and branding. So making sure that the that you're marketing the facility constantly to the local public or through social media. Okay, running events for the community at your center is a great way to market. And then, then just making sure the branding is attractive right so making sure that the name of your facility is is a name that attracts people to want to come and uh you know use it right you don't want to have a name where people look at it and go oh yeah i don't like the name of that facility i don't want to go and try it out okay so marketing and branding really important to improve it and like i said you could run community events for local churches local schools have it done at your facility you don't even have to charge uh, them to use your facility but it's a great way to market and to get more parents and players to know about your facility uh, next one staff training and that just kind of goes in with the safety protocol make sure that all your coaches are qualified make sure that all your coaches are criminal background checked um, and just making sure the staff inside the facility are trained for any event, whether it be admin, administrative work, whether it be in, in the event of an evacuation, whether it be that you have certain staff that come in to, to clean the facility, right? Just making sure that there's staff training constantly and that you're staying up to date with the different trends in the indoor sports facility uh, industry, okay? Because you know, it's again, it's an industry that changes a lot, right? And different, there might be different laws within your your state that change. So just making sure that you're always up to date and that you're training staff uh, in line with them. Okay, and then last one is maintenance and upgrade. And that kind of goes back to just making sure that, you know, your facility is quality. Uh, it's maintained well. So it's clean, everything works. It has great ventilation, good lighting, making sure that if something breaks, it gets fixed quickly. Um, now with upgrades, and I know with, with turf fields, for example, in soccer, uh, there's 
loads of companies and manufacturing different types of turf fields. So making sure that you're you're kind of staying up to date with those latest trends is really important because you know you could upgrade your facility to have a certain type of playing field where your local competitors don't have it right it might be a big investment but it will separate you from everyone else okay so just making sure that everything's maintained well it's you know the health and safety procedures are in place uh, everything works the pitch or the the field or the court it doesn't have any cracks or it's not broken there's no hazards and making sure that you're just staying up to date with any upgrades in the industry and with with any certifications that you may need to stay in line with your local uh, laws okay so if you need any more help with this reach out to me okay description below number of ways that you can reach out to me to ask any questions and also, if you do want more help with your indoor sports facility, this is something that we can help you with. But what we'd have to do is get on a call. So you can book a free 15-minute uh, call with me. Just the link is below. Book a call with me and we can see how, how and if we can help you. Okay, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our channel.